Welcome to the Life After Life podcast, where we explore our soul's physical and non-physical journey. I'm Majana. Let's discuss angels, guides, and loved ones from the other side. Hello and welcome back. I hope everybody's doing great and enjoying your summer so far. It occurs to me after the fact that, you know, people might listen to this any time of the year. So right now it is June 2020 and hot in Texas. For quite some time now, people have been experiencing spiritual awakenings and really been called or felt pushed or led to do something either more or different than what they're doing right now. More than ever, I think people are being called to step into their soul purpose. And sometimes it's really, really clear what that is. And other times, well, it's as clear as mud. Ask your angels and guides for help on that. They can't always tell you exactly what to do, but they can certainly point you in the right direction and help you put pieces together. If you are interested in a session, I so love meeting you. Look at soulfoodtalks.com for more information. And those of you that have it figured out, and so many people in our sessions, that's exactly what we do. But here's the question. (laughs) Next steps, right? Because now this is the new piece that's showing up. I know where I'm going now, or I have a really good idea of the direction I'm going. But now all of our little subconscious blocks and those thoughts that I'm not good enough or am I qualified or wait, I need more time. I need to research. I need to study. I need to go to school or whatever your fill in the blank is. So let me just assure you that yes, you are good enough. Yes, you are qualified. And no, you don't need to go back to school and get a new degree. (laughs) The goddesses keep saying you have been preparing your whole life for this. You have it. You got this. Let's go. You're just getting to sometimes find your legs and your sure footing on the fly, but you can do it. So let's talk a minute about those subconscious things that keep getting in our way. You know, in our old paradigm, those often would hold us back from our greatness because we allowed them to. And that's no different right now. Here's the way it looks to me, though. This is the difference. In the past... We had our whole lives to learn and experience our new opportunities, our lessons, and then merge it all together, assimilate it into our lives, grow through it, come to our conclusions. And then in our old age, we truly are the wise sage. Well, I feel like with all of this that's happening now, it's like we had our birth until now. To figure it all out. (laughs) And now we're being called to put it all to action. So those years of assimilation and processing it and reflecting on it have kind of been all scrunched up and compacted into a much shorter time period. And we're being called to put legs to that which we already know and step into our greatness because the world needs us. This is what we're here to do. And as overwhelming as that can seem, and I do get it, I know it can be, I promise from what I'm told, we already are fully equipped for what each of us are being called to do. Now that doesn't mean you're ready to walk out and conquer the world. You might need to fine tune some of your knowledge or skills and still add to your spiritual tool belt a little bit, but we are way more prepared than we think. So I was thinking about this and our biggest adversary right now seems to be our subconscious blocks, those self-doubts. So it made me think about sharing with you my experience in trying to overcome some of my stuff. The universe knows me very well and knows that humor is the best way to get my attention and to get me to act on something. You make me laugh and you've got me. So the whole concept of actually having a conversation with your subconscious mind came into my reality years ago. I kind of thought about it for a while, being Capricorn, got to think about it, get analytical, and I decided I'm going to give this a shot. So what is the purpose of your subconscious mind? Well, it never forgets anything in this lifetime. From the moment you were born, your subconscious mind, so I've read, remembers absolutely everything everything everybody has ever said to you and every experience that you have had. And your subconscious mind's 
objective is to protect you, to keep you safe. So it's really not our adversary, although sometimes it seems like it because we always think of it as, I can't do this because I have a subconscious block. When we are lucky enough to identify those blocks, then we're left scratching our heads going, okay, now what do I do with this? So I'm going to share with you my process and outcome. Well, I decided, first of all, I wanted a name for my subconscious mind because subconscious mind is very impersonal and I wanted to get up close and personal. So as I was drifting off to sleep one night, I said to my subconscious mind, hey, you know, we're really going through this lifetime together and you're doing this amazing job of protecting me and sometimes protecting me from myself. And I get it. That's your job. And I am so, so grateful for that. Thank you. And here's the deal. You are so protective that sometimes, well, you're a little overprotective. And I want to know how to work with you for our highest and best good so we can actually overcome some of these self-doubts and obstacles and have a new level of confidence and success. So to meet those needs and to work towards that end, I really want to work with you. But I don't want to keep calling you subconscious mind. So by the time I wake up in the morning, will you be really, really clear about a name that I should call you? And when I wake up, make that name very clear to me without any doubts, and we'll move on from there. So the next morning as I'm waking up, I became aware of that song, the old waltz called Waltzing with Matilda. And it was very, very clear in my mind, and I knew I wasn't dreaming. And I thought, why in the world is somebody blasting that song first thing in the morning? Who would be doing that? So I laid there being a little irritated, quite honestly, that somebody would have their music up that loud in the morning. And the more I started waking up, I realized that was in my head. That's often how I hear spirits as well, especially when I'm waking up and I thought, okay, that's interior, not exterior. So I lay there just listening and trying to figure out why in the world I would be hearing this song. Well, then the song stopped, but I saw a mind movie and there is a children's movie called Matilda that, gosh, is maybe from the late 80s, early 90s, I think. And Matilda is a little girl with magical powers and was getting even, playing some pranks on a very mean teacher. And I thought, what is that show called and why am I seeing it? And I clearly heard the name Matilda and it all started coming together. Matilda, I think, is a very cute name. And it's also pretty old fashioned, at least in this country. If someone were to ask me to describe myself, old fashioned would probably be one of the last adjectives that I would select. To me, Matilda fits in the time period of the pioneers. And as much admiration as I have for them, I do not have one pioneering bone in my body. I would consider myself more futuristic, give me new and shiny and the fastest, best technology and way to do things instead of the hard manual survival skills that the pioneers had to have. That being said, I was more than a little surprised when the name Matilda showed up and to think that my subconscious mind chose it. So I actually got a pretty good chuckle out of that and questioned the authenticity of it. I have spent way too much time arguing with my guides and subconscious mind thinking that my conscious ego knows way better than they do. So in true Majana form, I said to my subconscious mind, Matilda, cute, that's cute. But are you sure that's what you want? Because I'll be happy to give you another 24 hours to think about it and let me know tomorrow morning. My subconscious mind amazingly, very, very clearly said to me, we can make shit happen. I truly laughed out loud at that point. I'm like, okay, Matilda, it is. And then you know what? Over the next probably week, the name Matilda came up everywhere. It was wild. I saw street signs for a Matilda Street that I had never even noticed before. I saw Matilda on billboards in writing all over the place. It was cracking me up and I thought, okay, got it. We are definitely going with Matilda. All right, I've got a name. What am I going to do with it? 
When I come to a place that I know I have a block, but I don't even necessarily know what the block is, I just know that in this area of my life, I don't have the level of success or confidence that I would like to have. Well, it's time to talk to Matilda. The best time to do that is at night as you're about to drift to sleep because your alpha brain waves is where your um, subconscious mind lives. Your conscious mind is simmering down for the night and your subconscious comes forward. That's where dreams come from, right? So the whole point of what we're trying to do is access your subconscious mind to work with you and show you where those blocks are. Why do I feel this way? Now, you can call this your subconscious mind. You can call it your higher self, even your guides, or your other than conscious self. I think at times there are very clear differences between angels, guides, other than conscious mind or subconscious mind, and higher self. And sometimes when we have a real block, does it matter who's helping us break through that? Sometimes I honestly have a little harder time figuring out where that's coming from. And it just doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. It, we're all working for my highest and best good. And we're all on the same team. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just a way of getting my conscious mind to acknowledge and identify something in the past that didn't work for me. And I put up protection for myself to prevent embarrassment or mental or physical or emotional pain or whatever it is. And I put up a really good wall and now I just want to scale that wall, bring it down a little bit because now I'm an adult. As we know, most of our subconscious programming and those blocks come from our childhood or early adulthood when we don't really have the intra and inter personal skills and problem solving and global vision to really figure out what's happening and see the whole picture. All we know is this is what happened, this was the result, and that result was painful, so boom, we're not going to do that again. And then it may kind of snowball into some bigger pieces where, what is it, public speaking is the number one fear. Why? We have friends and we talk to friends all the time. So someplace in there, there became a fear of talking to a group of people. So it's just a matter of tracing it back. So no matter what your subconscious block is, open up a dialogue. Remember, you are bridging the gap between your conscious and subconscious mind. So sleep is a really good time to do that. Be really, really clear. Hey, Matilda, tonight while I'm sleeping, through dreams, would you take me back to the beginning of my belief that I'm not good enough to do this or that I don't deserve this kind of happiness or whatever your block is. And Matilda, this is serious, serious work that we're doing because we both want me to be really happy and successful. So will you please show me these things in my sleep, but then when I'm waking up in the morning, help me remember them. And would you be willing to work with my conscious mind to help fill in any gaps so we can really address this and look at it as adults and figure out how to heal and move through this to be bionic, better, faster, and stronger than before. Sounds kind of corny, maybe, and it works. Here's the deal. These are conversations you're having with yourself silently in your mind before you go to sleep at night. If everything else you have tried up to this point hasn't worked for you, what's the harm in trying a new strategy, right? And nobody even has to know because it's an internal dialogue. So then the next step becomes helping that subconscious become conscious. Once you have accepted, okay, this is what happened and you can start healing through it, then it's easier to shine that flashlight into the darker reaches of the mind where all of these subconscious blocks are stored because once you get them in the light, you can start working on them. Then ask, okay, we did this at night, and thank you for helping me remember. Tell your subconscious mind thank you, by the way, as well as your angels and guides. So thank you for helping me, and now during the day, help me remember this, and let's talk about it. So you might talk about it in a meditation or just in quiet time. You don't have to do a real meditation. Be really open to what shows up. It's probably going to be memories of some kind. 
But here's the other piece. This is big. When you're dealing with your subconscious mind or angels and guides or spirits from the other side, they can communicate literally or metaphorically. That is a huge piece to remember. So think about dreams. How often do your dreams not make sense? They're absolutely like bizarre. You know it could never happen. And then they can even change scenes really fast and merge together into something really wonky. So that's what your subconscious mind does really, really well. Is take the real issues and mask them with a lot of images that represent other things. The same thing is happening when you're dealing with your issues, your current issues or your blocks. This happens to me with the other side. When they're communicating with me, if they just tell me, if they're using my clairaudience, that's usually the easiest. If I'm being clairvoyant and they can show me pictures or show me scenes, that's pretty easy. Oh, and then, of course, claircognizant is the easiest of all because you just know. The tricky one, they're using clairvoyance to give me symbols or using metaphors of some kind. A lot of times they'll show me something from my life and I'm supposed to make that relevant to your life. And then it's a guessing game or I'll see a symbol or something and I'm supposed to figure out how that fits into your life. That's the challenge. Okay. So be aware that exactly what you are getting may be a metaphor or a symbol for something else. This is one of my absolute favorites. I read this in some book years and years ago, probably in college or even high school. I have no idea what the name of the book was, or I would be happy to share that. What I remember is this businessman, and he was probably like a broker. He was investing somebody else's money, and he was contemplating the market. I don't remember if it was in his dream or if he was sitting at his desk, but he got a really clear image of this pink rabbit snow skiing, and it was going down the hill or down the mountain really, really fast. And then it started going up another hill. This is my memory, so it may not be exact, right? But the symbolism is perfect. So he was watching the stocks. Well, what it turned out to be was a certain brand of batteries that used a Energizer bunny as its symbol in all of the commercials. What he saw in his vision is what the stocks were doing for that brand, I recall he was working on developing intuition and doing exercises is why this was relevant. But I just was like, bingo, that's exactly how it works. He didn't get a very clear message that, oh, this is the stock you want to watch. It was a metaphor. It was a symbol. And you have to kind of decipher that sometimes. So be really open. Unfortunately, we don't always get the absolute clear messages that we're hoping to get. And you can ask for clarity as well. Things I did not used to know. When we're talking about dealing with entities on the other side, and as well as your subconscious mind, ask for clarity. Set boundaries. Ask for more signs. Ask for greater clarity. Typically, you're going to get your request. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to show up in the form you're expecting, but you have to be open and creative because the universe is vastly creative and amazing at reaching you. So that was just a little thing I wanted to share because I, I feel like this is the next step. When we're being called into our greatness, that means we're also being called into some things that we're not necessarily comfortable in stepping into because of subconscious blocks. So I would love to hear how your experiences go for you as you're overcoming, well, first of all, identifying and then overcoming some of these obstacles. You can reach me at Majana at lifeafterliferadio.com. I would love to meet you for a reading and help you figure out what you're doing, what that sole purpose is, or where you're being pushed or led to go into your next great steps. The session descriptions are on soulfoodtalks.com. I record them on Zoom and send you a Dropbox link so you have them and can look over as often as you would like. And basically, it's one hour or two hours. And I will tell you that one hour goes really, really fast. Two hours is the deep dive and your whole soul team is present and they're just amazing. And I love to meet you. Let me hear from you and know how you're doing. And until next time, namaste.